welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. I'm Kamiko Love from thebudgetmom.com and today we're going over how I create and plan for new savings goal either coming up in the future or savings goals that are happening in the following year. So right now we're talking about 2023. So recently I posted a little reel on my Instagram going over and showing kind of my visual board getting a makeover with my new savings visuals, my savings trackers. And a lot of people requested that I go over the process of what this looks like in my real life, creating new sinking funds or new savings goals. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's talk first about sinking funds. What is a sinking fund? A sinking fund is saving a little bit from each paycheck for an upcoming or expected expense that is happening in the future. Now this is very different from emergency savings. So an emergency fund is for unplanned, unexpected expenses that pop up in our life, true emergencies. Whereas sinking funds, they're expected, they're planned, we know they're coming up. So with that being said, how do you create sinking funds in your life when you will always have more wants than dollars? I always find that a lot of people who start the process of creating savings goals for upcoming events, occasions, or holidays, or sinking funds in their lives, end up creating like 30. And then when they go to create their budget, they say, oh my gosh, I don't have the income to cover all of these different sinking funds. So with that being said, when I first started, so in 2019, at the end of 2019, I became debt free. And when that happened in my life, one of the things that I told myself is, okay, I've hit that big goal. I have paid off all my debt. Now the real journey begins. Now the real challenge begins to not go back into debt in the future. And I've always said that a debt payoff journey is not about the payments that you're making or even how much debt you have. It has to do with learning the skills and healthy habits necessary to not go back into debt in the future. So one of the things that I started implementing in my life very heavily was saving goal and sinking funds. Look, one of the things that I struggled with the most was Christmas, holiday shopping. It's the one event that pops up every single year that I found myself pressured to use a credit card. And in fact, a lot of the time, I would put money on my credit card during the holidays and I would still be paying off the previous year holidays the next holiday that came around. So I was carrying that debt for an entire year. And I thought to myself, hmm, okay, I know it's coming up. I've been tracking my spending for years. I should be able to plan responsibly and prepare ahead of time for this expense coming up. So when I had debt even, I had one sinking fund in my life, Christmas, because it was the one time out of the year where I would constantly overspend, constantly find myself in that vicious cycle of taking on debt, paying off the debt even a year later. So I started with a very small Christmas sinking fund. I think at the time it was around $200. That was my total goal. Today, after being debt free and working through this process for a couple of years, I've increased that limit to $1,000. So it's important, I say all that because it's important, create sinking funds or savings goals, especially if it's a known occasion, holiday or event or an expense we know is coming up, for those things that you really know you overspend, the, 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 the events, the holidays, the occasions where you know you find yourself constantly swiping a credit card. And for me, it was Christmas. So today I'm gonna be going over this process with you, showing you my real savings goals and sinking funds for the new year in 2023. So let's start by looking at what exactly are my savings goals and sinking fund goals for 2023? And then we'll get in the process of how I arrived at this. 
Now this sinking funds savings tracker that you're seeing here is available in my free resource library. All of the tools that you see in today's video, I'll make sure to put a link to the TBM shop or the free resource library in the description so you can have access to these things. So first, the first one I have is Christmas. Now, how do you turn a goal into a sinking fund or something that you can plan for in advance? Now, let's look at Christmas for a second. Christmas, I have a $2,000 goal. If I were to wait until November and I'm like, crap, okay, I need to start buying Christmas gifts, I need to start planning Christmas dinner, I need to start buying things, coming up with this amount of money or even $500 or even $200 at that time is a big hit to our current inflow in that period in our lives. Not only, and not only that, it's a big hit to our budgets. We find ourselves scrambling. We find ourselves making decisions and reacting to the events rather than planning for the events. So how do you prepare and create a sinking fund or turn a goal into a sinking fund? So let's say your, your goal is to save $2,000 for Christmas. To turn it into a sinking fund, you need to break that bigger goal into smaller achievable steps for yourself. So we turn it into a sinking fund. So I know I want to have $2,000 saved by November of 2023. Now, most of my goals for the new year in 2023, I'll start saving for in January. So that gives me 11 months to save from January to November. Now, the reason you're seeing this highlighted yellow is because if I have unused Christmas savings from 2022 this year that I don't use, I'll roll it over into my next year's goal. So I'm just still waiting since Christmas hasn't happened yet. I'm still waiting to see how much I have saved already or how much I need to start saving every month. But Valentine's Day, you can see, all right, I wanna have $500 by January of 2024. If I start saving in January of 2023, that means I have 12 months to save. I am gonna have $0 at that time. I'll need to save $500. So 500 divided by 12 is gonna give me $42 a month. I have to save $42 a month starting in January of 2023 to reach my goal of $500 by January of 2024. Do you see how $42 a month is drastically lower and a less hit to our budget than the total of 500 because we are not planning or preparing in advance and we're reacting to what's happening in our lives rather than planning and preparing ahead. I would much rather save $42 a month, have peace of mind knowing that, okay, I know Valentine's happens every year. I know I spend money on it every year. And I have the cash and savings when that time comes rather than getting to Valentine's Day and being like, crap, I wanna get some, my spouse something nice for Valentine's Day or do a small weekend getaway and I'm swiping my credit card because I'm reacting to the events that make up my real life and the things that I value and enjoy. So you might be saying, Miko, you have a lot going on. Keep in mind that everyone's savings, priorities, goals, sinking funds, things that they value is gonna be different for everyone, especially based on our budget situation. Now I'm debt free. So my entire priority in my financial routine and the way I manage my finances is saving and investing because I don't have to worry about debt payments. Now, if you do have debt and you're saying, Miko, debt is my number one priority, then you might just have one or two sinking funds here and that's okay. Planning and preparing for the things that pressure you the most to go back into debt or you swipe a card when you know you don't have the money is still a win. That's still learning the, the healthy habits to stay out of debt. So what I have going on here, if it's highlighted in blue and it might be kind of hard to see, those are the ones I'm saving for in cash. 
If it's highlighted in purple, those are the ones that I'm making online transfers the day I get paid. Every paycheck, I'm gonna make online transfers to these different savings accounts at my credit union. And you might be asking Miko, how do you know what things to save in cash and what things to save in say a separate savings account at your credit union or even a, a online high yield savings account? It depends. And it depends on how you spend your money. So for me, you can notice most of the ones that I'm saving for in cash are holidays and events I know are coming up and I'm going to be using those savings in a relatively short amount of time or I'm accessing them often. So I might pick up a Christmas present I see on a really good sale in February of 2023 or in June, or Amazon Prime Day. Well, I'll have the cash available to do that. I'll just pull from the amount that I have saved. The ones in purple that I am saving at separate savings accounts at my credit union are bigger goals that I access less frequently. And these are things, are, these are the periodic expenses in my life that I know I have to pay and they're bigger amounts. So for instance, property taxes. I own acreage. My property taxes are higher. House maintenance, car maintenance, pest control, house insurance. We're starting a new sinking fund, a baby sinking fund. We have plans and hopes to expand our family. I know and I, I hope that's a part of my near future. So guess what? I'm going to plan and prepare in advance for those expenses. Peace of mind, less stress, less worry. Financial confidence, better control of my dollars. And vacation. Those are what I'm going to be doing online transfers to. Now, you might be saying, Miko, I'm, I'm saving up for an emergency fund. So my emergency fund is already established. Because my emergency fund is larger and it's fully funded, I have about 75% of my emergency fund on a high yield savings account with Ally. The rest is in cash in a separate emergency fund savings account. So what you decide to save for in cash versus what you want to save at a savings account or whatnot, is dependent on how you spend your money. What makes you feel the most comfortable? If you know, hey, I do online shopping for all of these things, then you might not wanna save in cash because you're gonna be wanting to have access to that through your checking account. So if you see ongoing, what does that mean? Well, here's a great example and I'll show you. So this is my sinking fund for Costco. And this is something that I call an ongoing sinking fund, meaning I don't have a specific goal in mind. It's just something I do every single paycheck. I save, I use it. I save, I use it. So let's look at my Costco um, sinking fund for this year. Now, you can see here that I'm Saving, using, saving, using, saving, using. I save $100 a month for Costco purchases because I like to do bulk grocery runs for meat. I like to buy some things in bulk that help me with saving money and meal prepping and planning. And I know that those are bigger grocery hauls outside of just say my monthly food budget. So. I budget $100 a month. There's no set goal I am trying to reach. It's just $100 a month and I use it when I need it. Now, when I keep a little tracker in my envelope, I can tell you right now I have $305 to spend at Costco. This is really handy too. If I have a really big get together at the house and I need to buy some things in bulk for the party or whatnot, I can just go to my Costco sinking fund. This is how I create more of stability in my life where my financial plan works in the good times and even when I'm struggling. 
even when something pops up in my life where it's something I really value, maybe it's a big get together with family, I can still say yes to that purchase because I'm planning in advance for the things that matter most to me. So that's an example of an ongoing sinking fund and I have a, a lot of those. So ongoing, I have sports, Costco, my disc sport, house maintenance, car maintenance, pest control, garden, baby, and vacation. So vacation is ongoing. I save $100 a month. Baby's gonna be $50 a month. My garden is $25 a month because I plant a garden in spring and fall. So I'm just saving for those planned expenses. This is what I'm currently saving for. You might be asking, how do I save for these in cash? What does that look like organizational wise? Well, I already created my cash envelopes for sinking funds and savings goals in my life. This is where I store my cash. I keep these in a fireproof safe locked away in a secure location at my home. Most people say I don't like having that much cash in my house. And that's totally fine. That's where you might decide to use online savings accounts instead. For me, I know my money is sec secure here at the house, so I don't mind having cash sinking funds at my house. So what I have done here, you can see I've created, for instance, like my son's birthday. That's a savings goal I'm gonna have in the new year. And then on the back, it's where I can, I still have to glue them, but they're made. I just can write in when I'm saving and keep track of how much I'm going to save. Now, here in just a minute, I'll show you how I stay motivated using visual savings trackers and what my visual board looks like, but that's um, how I save in my sinking fund envelopes for the new year. Those are made for 2023. So how did I arrive at this? When you are wanting to create sinking funds or savings goals for yourself that are upcoming, first thing you need to do is look back on past spending. So because I've been doing this for a long while, I have my sinking fund savings tracker from 2022. I'm able to reference and look back and say, okay, this is what I saved for this year. This is what I plan for. How did it work out? Did I feel like I need more? Did I save, did I have a lot of money left over so I might've saved too much? I'm really able to tweak based on what currently happened with my savings goals, say this year. So, if you're just starting out and you're just for the first time creating this, keep them. Keep them as you go along from year to year. That way you can come back and reference. So if you don't have any type of history of spending, look at your, your bank statements for around Christmas time. Highlight Christmas purchases that you made. How much did it add up to? Did you have enough? Did you feel you had to use your credit card? And then what you're going to do is you're gonna figure out, based on your savings tracker, how much you need to save every single month going forward to hit your goal. You're gonna implement that in your budget. Does it work in your budget? Do you not have enough income for that? Do you maybe have to decrease this and kind of tweak and change some of your goal amounts to be more realistic with the income and budget that you have? Insert these amounts, the amount that you have to save every month into your budget. How does it work with the current income you have? So look at past spending, that's what I did. The first thing I did is I went back to my sinking funds tracker from 2022 and say, okay, what did I save for? Did I need that? Did it work in my life? Did I save too much? Did I save too little? Could I cut back here? I asked myself all those questions I analyzed. And because I've been tracking my spending so long, I, was, I, I have all of my spending for Christmas. How much I spent on Christmas is back on my November expense trackers from last year. I could tell you exactly how much I spent. I could tell you exactly how it made me feel. So the first thing is figuring out what exactly you want to save for. Now, I, I suggest starting with one or two different 
events, holidays, or occasions you know are coming up. Think about things like your um, expenses, your periodic spe expenses that you know are happening. Property taxes is a great one. Car registrations. We all know that those things are going to be happening. Can we prepare in advance by saving a little bit every single month so it's not such a hit to our budget when we're just reacting to these things that we know are happening? So that's how I came up with the amounts and what I was saving for, looking at past spending and analyzing those savings goals. So let me show you very quickly my visual board. All right, so over here in my office, I have a visual board that looks like this. These are my savings goals trackers that I am going to use in 2023. Why are trackers so important? Because it helps you stay motivated. Sometimes when you're saving such small amounts, it just feels like a small drop in a really big bucket. You can see that my chicken fund, each one of those eggs only represents $10. So sometimes it feels frustrating because I don't feel like I'm making progress, but when I'm able to see it in the big picture, then I know and can visually see I am making progress. Now these sinking funds or savings goals trackers, um, some of them are from my free resource library, some of them are from um, the TBM shop. But you can see like I have both Chris's and James's birthday. I already have some money saved for my pet fund. You can see that by the teal lines that I'm coloring in. So this is how I track my progress and stay motivated with all of my savings goals. And this um, board is what I'm gonna be using for 2023. It's ready and set to go. So that's the entire process going over how I create savings goals in my life. You might be saying, well, Miko, it's only right now at the time I record this video, it's August of 2022. Why the heck are you preparing for 2023 already? Like I already feel behind because you're already, you're already getting a start on this. The reason being is because I have my wedding coming up in about three weeks. After my wedding, between all the different travel, honeymoon, my birthday vacation, everything, Thanksgiving, holiday season, Christmas, I know it's gonna be happening very, very quickly and I know I'm gonna be very busy. And one of the things that gives me peace of mind is knowing exactly what to do with my money when I get a paycheck. I have a plan already created for those dollars, even though I haven't received the money yet. That's what gives me peace of mind. So knowing how busy I'm going to be towards the end of this year and having all of these already completed, knowing in January, hey, I have this roadmap. I have these goals that are important to me that I value and I know exactly what to do with my money. It's already mapped out, it's already done. So that's why I'm getting such an early start this year. I know usually I share my sinking funds and savings goals here on YouTube closer to November. This year we're getting an early start. So I encourage you though, to start thinking about this, especially if you want to implement like a holiday or Christmas sinking fund into your life. That spending hasn't happened yet. This gives you the opportunity to track this spending this year, realistically. How much you're really spending so you can better plan and be prepared in the future for next year. Remember, this is all about growing and adapting our budgets with the knowledge that we accumulate along the way. And you still even have time to save up a little bit of money if you want to implement a Christmas sinking fund or holiday sinking fund in your life starting today. We have some time before November and December happen. So that is my entire process. If you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe.